Hey viewers, welcome back to Waha Woman. This is your friend and host Rajini Vora. It's time to meet our today's guest. Guys, our today's guest is someone who is the voice of transformation of the European Union via new culture leadership and women empowerment. She is a European policymaker, podcast host, founder of several women networks, and a career coach of young leaders. Please welcome Lucia Klastin Kova. Hi Lucia, we welcome you on our channel and thank you so much for joining us. In fact, we are very delighted to have you on our show. Hi Rajni, big big thanks for invitation to be on your show and especially big hello to the audience from one of the hearts of European Union in Brussels, Belgium. I hope you all have a very nice day and this will be a useful exchange for you. So Lucia, as I said that you are known as the voice of transformation of the European Union via new culture leadership and women empowerment. It would be great if you could let us know a little bit more about this new culture leadership. Yeah, indeed. Uh, new culture leadership is one of my biggest passions. It is the areas of engagement that I've been uh, passionate about a lot these past years and working on a lot in, I was kind of more and more inside of my professional engagement, but even more outside uh, as long as we are able to distinguish the two. And so what it means for me, it is, you can also call new culture leadership, feminine leadership, purpose-driven, values-based leadership, people use different kind of labels, but the idea that is behind it underlying as far as I understand and as far as I'm inviting people to consider and discuss this notion with me, it is the idea of bringing the masculine and feminine features to collaborate together. We've seen a lot of undesired results uh, going on in the business environment of the planet, the planet as such, the nature, the way society works, as a result of the values that were underlying the way organizations work over the past century. And so we are now at the, at the stage of uh, society, societal conversation where I think it's important to question and redesign the way we are leading uh, co-creation and collaboration in the organizations and in the countries at whichever level of society we're looking at. And one of those features is the feminine values. So while for me, the masculine way of leading, which we've seen in the business and society the past hundred years, let's say, is a very focused drive uh, towards results with a very, yeah, big obsession on efficiency, very bottom-up, um, almost a strict, uncompromising way of leading, which is obviously extremely useful in many, many situations and contexts. But it feels like we've been missing the other half, uh, the other side of the coin, the other, uh, the other possibility that is often uh, useful or needed in contexts where more collaboration and listening and tailor-made approaches are needed and that's where the feminine side comes in where the societies families businesses the planet need more of a calmer collaborative listening co-creation respect for one's needs and preferences and creating the context for everybody to bring their best gifts for the co-creation of the results that we would like to see in the society. And so that's why it's so important the work that you and me and many other organizations around the world are doing on feminine empowerment, women's empowerment and the whole equality narrative uh, which is focusing on giving voice to people uh, who wouldn't have access to speaking up in the past because unless we cover the whole uh, spectrum of voices, we are unlikely to generate the results that we would like to see um, in the society. And so uh, just to wrap up, uh, because it's been a rather long answer, for me it is um, the notion of bringing more feminine values to the conversation, allowing the voices that haven't been heard until now to speak authentically, freely, and invitation to a much more collaboration and tailor-made uh, respect for one's needs uh, in the functioning of teams uh, than it was uh, the default until now. Lucia, many studies have proved how more women in senior leadership roles such as public administration and corporate boards translate into positive return for better outcomes, augmented performance. But the number of women holding high rank position is still lesser than men in most of the countries. 
what reasons do you see behind this parity? Well, exactly, because of what I've been talking about in the previous question, the result of this style of leadership that the society has been designed around the past decades and century, the natural result of it is that we would have seen men rising up the corporate ladder to the top of the organizations much more than women, simply because the design of the way organizations work, the values that were valued, the way we were promoting, the behaviors that we are rewarding in the promotion uh, systems are the ones which were designed by and for men. So naturally there is a big gap that needs to be filled and obviously there is um, a big disparity still at the degree of representation of both uh, genders at uh, the various degrees uh, and stages and, and levels of organizations of management and so obviously there's different reasons to it. I think it's important also to mentioned that I think the reasons are very uh, obviously different in different cultural spaces. Uh, I would like to yeah, repeat maybe that uh, where I'm more knowledgeable it's uh, the European Union space while the audience here is more Indian or Asian I understand so I would like to maybe invite ourselves to consider all that I'm saying with a big disclaimer because obviously I, I, I love Asian culture. I am very uh, respectful of, of the values, the religion, the, the ways, uh, the awakening and healing of the humanity is so supported by, by the values uh, that your culture is bringing to the global conversation. And at the same time, the um, diagnosis, the results uh, that we're seeing and the reasons uh, why the gap is there in the organizations might be massively different in, in Indian, Asian or European culture. Even, without you, even within Europe, we often say that there is no one size fits all approach. And if you look at uh, Spain with the culture and religion uh, and the history that's uh, um, underpinning the structure of the society, if you look at Germany, if you look at Slovakia that I come from, if you look at Sweden in the north, all these countries have so much um, diverse legacy and cultural designs that um, the reasons cannot be unified, which is again uh, why it's so important to empower the organizations at the local level and then connect all of us so that we can exchange the best practices, learn uh, from one another in how do we go about uh, tackling the problem that we are facing in the society. But I think it's really important to acknowledge that um, it's a very unique situation that we're looking at. And so the reasons obviously can um, be varied. It can be religious uh, underpinning of the design of uh, the power structures in the society. It's a big part of it in my, uh, from my perspective and also in the context in Sweden operating is the family structures, uh, the role that a woman typically plays in the society, in the families, the access to power, self-expression on project. It's very also related to financial independence, the ability uh, for women to truly stand for themselves, disregarding of uh, whether or not uh, they are receiving financial support from their partner or the family, which all underpins the decisions they're taking for themselves, for their uh, kids, how do they reconcile their uh, parenting uh, obligations with the desire to show up in the society and pursue a career which ultimately might, might end up uh, at a higher ranking positions of the organizations. And then obviously it is also the design of the organizations. What what were the objectives with which a company is set up and what are the objectives required by the board? What kind of performance uh, when you're talking about the performance uh, and how it's impacted by more equal participation of women? How do we actually define a profitable company or a successful company? Is it only uh, the numbers game, the revenues, profitability, the reach of new target groups, the launch of new products, or is it also the values that transpire through how the company operates, the happiness of the staff, the values that are embedded in the products and oftentimes more and more uh, appreciated by the 
by the consumers, be it uh, fair trade, be it sustainability impact, be it all kinds of uh, diversity features that the consumers and clients of the companies are more and more aware of uh, with how um, the social media and internet allows us to be much more uh, open and have much more access uh, tr to transparent information about how the companies are operating. So um, yeah, the reasons are different, but a lot of it comes from, again, the values-based uh, leadership that I was talking about before and which are the values that the organization is pursuing through its activity. If uh, equality is one of the uncompromising parts of the design and the mission and the value proposition of the company, then obviously you will see women on the boards of those companies. Lucia, how do you see women across the world coming together and supporting each other? Do you think it is feasible to help and support each other across continents? Oh, absolutely. As I've already mentioned, I am such a big believer in collaborations. And while we all understand that we operate in very unique contexts, there's nothing more important. I feel that whenever we're trying to drive transformation in the little or bigger context that we're active in, it's so important to have access to support structures and communities and sisterhood of some some kind, uh, whatever you call it, support structure, mentors, role models, and partner organizations that you can get inspiration from, learn from, get coaching and mentoring from, and possibly also develop co collaborations if you feel that your approach can be scaled up or useful for somebody um, across the pond or in, a, on an, in another country, on another continent. So it's, um, it's a very important uh, part of the design that I'm also trying to bring into my projects. And it's also one of the reasons why the two of us got connected, because you notice what I've been doing with uh, my podcast Lights in Europe and with my YouTube channel. So maybe I could also invite your audience if uh, whoever's listening to us, if you call, if you feel called uh, to what I'm sharing here, if that resonates with uh, how you uh, would like to show up in your um, in your societal context, in your community, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, I would like to invite you to check out my uh, podcast Lights on Europe on the podcast uh, channels. If you go to my website, uh, luciaklesinkova.eu, which is an impossible uh, name to pronounce, but I believe the link will be somewhere here accompanying the video. If you Google me, you will find my website. Connect to my social media channels. If you go to my YouTube channel, you will find plenty of videos where I've been interviewing other uh, thought leaders uh, or new culture leaders, mainly from the European space and trying to continue this kind of conversation. The last uh, month I've been doing a series of interviews on the topic of sexual and domestic violence, especially in the context of COVID crisis and how in lockdown or even beyond, how can the victims of domestic and intimate partner violence can uh, protect themselves or do their safety planning? And how can we as agents of change show up for these people, especially in these extreme situations, they don't have access to the normal support structures that they would normally have. So this is just an example of what I'm trying to do. Um, go ahead and check it out. And I'm always looking for um, fans or ambassadors or people who would be interested to help out with growing, spreading, uh, increasing the reach of uh, what I'm trying to communicate through these interviews. Um, and so, as I was saying, I'm a big, big fan of, uh, of your culture and I haven't had, um, yeah, I don't have yet any, any collaborators or ambassadors uh, to uh, spread the work that I'm doing in India. So if anybody feels called to, to collaborate, to contribute, uh, to be part of what I'm trying to do, please get in touch and I'll be uh, more than happy to discuss how can we uh, bridge the communications that we're trying to do in these different uh, geographical spaces. Because as I was saying, the ultimate problems that we're facing as uh, women who are trying to bring this new cultural leadership is ultimately the same because the design of the humanity is the same. So I think we can uh, yeah, scale our game a lot more if we, if 
we learn to explore this uh, potential for co-creating something across these different geographical spaces. And what message do you have for all women entrepreneurs across the globe who are watching you? Hmm. My main message would be trust in yourself. Don't let anybody or even yourself doubt yourself. Because the fact that you're a woman entrepreneur is already so disrupting the design of or the expected kind of route into which we were born and brought up with. So this already shows that you are super courageous, warrior, disruptor, and there's beautiful energy and ideas and vision that you have for changing the world. So don't don't stand in your own way because we are very very good at doing that to ourselves but also don't let the people who are doubting what you're trying to achieve uh, don't let them stop stop you from showing up in the world and at the same time trust um, that you're on the perfect path that there are no failures i'm a big believer in lessons rather than failures i think there's a higher reason for everything that's happening in our lives even if it's our project not advancing as much as we would like or or our product not selling and the universe forcing us to repurpose it into something else so i'm a big believer in, in trying to strike the right balance between the belief in ourselves and this uncompromising focus and determination to follow the inner voice that we have and the vision that we are trying to bring or the yeah the self-expression the the dream that we have created i'm a big believer in trying to uh, continuously reconnect with that inner force in order to be able to show up in the world and bring this contribution and finding that gentle balance between this and the surrendering the trusting that uh that things will happen in one way or another and whatever happens is in uh, our interest and there's a lot that can be learned and, and there's a big message in everything that comes our way so uh, it's a big combination of like learning this gentle dance between being a, a fierce, fierceful but graceful and humble uh, dancer and warrior at the same time so I don't know if it makes any sense but that's how I'm trying to reconcile the two again masculine and feminine voices in my head every day when when things get tough sometimes it's easier sometimes it's tougher and so it's a daily practice right so um, thank you very much for listening I hope uh, any of this was uh, was useful and I'll be looking forward to uh, hearing from you if uh, if you find it interesting and if you think we could go create something together Thank you so much, Lucia, for being with us and sharing your perspective. We wish you all the best for all your future endeavors and projects. Thank you so much once again. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm really happy that we got connected. And uh, as I said, uh, I hope this is just the first stage of collaborations. And this was just a little teaser into uh, what I stand for in this period of my life. And so I'll be looking forward to the continuation of our conversation. Thank you very much and take care. Bye. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.